What a time to be alive. Back to the wall, it's do or die, baby. You and I, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, what a time. Sean and Kanisa Darby embarked on their pudding journey in July of 2016 when Kanisa created her own signature take on the crowd favorite banana pudding. Participating in fairs, events, and pop ups, the husband and wife duo birthed a dessert brand that grew to be loved by many. Kanisa, having experience in the food industry, helped elevate their product to a new level of taste. Sean, coming from sales and marketing, had a passion for driving sales and building relationships through products. The journey has been everything except easy, but the couple is certain that it is all worth it. And I'm scared to live. It's daddy. Scared to live, some scared to die. How the storyline become traumatizing. Dark roads and no yellow bricks, just a strong hope down to one wish. Tantalizing at the same time, how we thinking about it with intrigued minds. Intersections, no street sign, got my mind racing, but I feel fine. Scared to live, some scared to die. How the storyline become traumatizing. Dark roads and no yellow bricks, just a strong hope down to one wish. Tantalizing at the same time, how we thinking about it with intrigued minds. Intersection, no street sign, got my mind racing, but I feel fine. Court hearings. Here we all can abort mission Lake Lee and now we all fishing Coin tossing like we well wishing Sad hearted like the ship sailed And the sun setting in the near distance Feeling like a nigga plan fell Awkward feeling like my face well Judgment coming at me always Apprehension make a nigga star plays Church playing like a Sunday Got me looking back down the one way Jesus Christ hope my death saves So my children love to get a dad praise Grew up trying stomach jail trades Nowadays a nigga pack a 12 gauge Treat a nigga like a blind slave I'ma pop up on him in the blind rage This the biggest Dottie Fontaine Keep my blow a nigga for a snot drain Wipe a nigga like a spot stain Making money really is the top aim Really trying to get this guap man I've been suffering, still in door pain Had a law playing Hunger Games Only get it when they see a nigga Hanging from a motherfucking tree A hustler is all I wanna be Success is really in my reach A journey giving up the streets Shit be really cutting deep Let them show it how they reap Closed casket out of peak Closed minded to their speech Death in any form seems to cut us The Darbys fought vigorously for years to build financial stability and structure to provide for their family and even thrived during a global pandemic. After building brick by brick, the Darbys lost their home, their business, and brand recognition all from the hands of one developer, the city of Easton, and multiple state actors. Borko Milosev, a Moravian college graduate out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and a large developer in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Borco, who owns Post Road Management, Post Road Construction, and 120 Northampton Street LLC, has a reputation in Easton for rehabilitating old, dilapidated properties with minimal upfront investment, huge amounts of government assistance, and great tax incentives. He purchases the building and gives it an LLC like 120 Northampton Street LLC. Then he creates a property management agreement between the LLC and his company Post Road Management so he can pay himself again at some point. Then he uses Post Road Construction to get permits for work needed on the building so of course he can pay himself again. Post Road manages more than 16,000 multifamily units nationwide. Despite Borco's involvement in all businesses pertaining to this building, he is still claiming to have no responsibility regarding the shoddy construction deemed by tenants, city codes, inspectors, council members, and even structural engineers. Borco was chosen by the city to receive these building as a rehab project. According to records, this rehab was about $2.5 million. However, Borco and his representatives still consider this an old building. The point of reversing the blight on this building was to eliminate the risk of public safety issues due to the age and condition of the building from sitting, exposed to the elements, for years. Borco was aware of this at the time of his bidding and purchasing this building. He doubled down on this by creating a property management contract on the building with his own company. Despite Borco's involvement in all businesses pertaining to this building, 
he is still claiming to have no responsibility regarding the shoddy construction deemed by tenants, city codes inspectors, council members, and even structural engineers. Borco was chosen by the city to receive these buildings as a rehab project. According to records, this rehab was about $2.5 million. He received numerous federal and state tax credits. He even received a large loan from the RDA and a grant for environmental remediation and technical assistance on applications for historic tax credits, tax abatements, and subsidy. However, Borco and his representatives still consider this an old, faulty building, despite the work he put into it. The point of reversing the blight on this building was to eliminate the risk of public safety issues due to the age and condition of the building from sitting, exposed to the elements, for years. Borco was aware of this at the time of his bidding and purchasing this building. He doubled down on this by creating a property management contract on the building with his own company, and tripled down by using his own construction company to purchase parts and contractors to do the work. Since the completion of the rehab, the Darbys were the first tenants in both their apartment and their commercial space. During their time spent at the 118-120 Northampton Street property, the couple has witnessed numerous tenants displaced due to issues in the building. After clawback provisions, blight reversals, tax credits, and grants, let's see how the building has been going under Borko Milosev's post-road management maintenance shortly after his rehab. Yeah. I seen the failed of dreams and then it disappeared. I can see a lot of pain That's behind the moving ears. A smile's worth a thousand words, but what's the price for tears? In my early years, I could never read the message clear. No weapon formed, unruly life is dread, but I won't die blue in a high pissed high cool. The art of war, I strategize like I'm Sun Tzu. Some quick on the draw, others swift with the one, two. See, you might can't undo some shit that a gun do, but let's keep it diplomatic, level ground and pray for balance. Everything don't call for violence, drown the arc with silence. Think about your next move, your mental like your best tool. Somehow we often misuse, God's greatest gifts don't confuse. Access with actual purpose, that's how you lose. A confrontation, make no excuses, and you can't pick and choose. It's like madness, it's crashing the system. Know how they bend the rules. Everything I'm saying is a warning, it's a, it's a, it's a plea for help. If everybody is so goddamn worried about me, why ain't nobody came to help me? You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be no star. This ain't my job. I don't care if everybody don't cheer for me. Here's a quick three-year summary of the issues the Darbys experienced in 118-120 Northampton Street. In email, Borco admits that none of these issues are the Darbys' fault, but says they're not his either. After all the documented issues, Borco is still finding it difficult to take ownership for his responsibility in providing a safe and habitable space for tenants to dwell. After all, it's his company that provides leases to live on the premises. The last straw came when the Darbys, who at the time were unaware of the city's involvement in this building and helping Borco accomplish their shared goals, contacted Easton City Codes regarding the dipping and sloping throughout their floors, as well as HVAC issues and a large void in the wall. Intentionally, the Darbys requested a neutral party due to their understanding of Charbel Khoury's lack of inspection regarding the property. Dwayne Tillman was chosen to come out and inspect the space. On March 1st, Dwayne Tillman came out to view the property. Let's see what he had to say when his peers were not present. That goes to the sprinkler system. Oh. Yeah, so a lot of these things, like these guys are, are sh these, these are actually shutoffs or bells that, that'll, that'll kick on. So right. that, I mean, that shouldn't even look like that. Yeah, what the fuck? And that's just from, like if there was water getting in, I mean, you can see there's something getting in from yeah. somewhere. Because this is brand new pipe, that should, that should never corrode it that fast. All right. It's been... Like this is some kind of microbial growth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they patched around here. Mm -hmm. It probably was even worse back here. That's probably why they, right. why they did what they did. After the visit with Dwayne, he violated post-road management for the issues he saw during his inspection of the premises. Dwayne expressed a lot of issues and made it clear that post-road management was to remove the drywall to review the issues underneath the pudding bar floors to access the issues with the dipping and sloping, 
to which Borco and Post Road initially refused, then cut a small portion, then complied a little further and removed a little less than a quarter of the dry wall in the basement. The Darbys were advised by Duane to hire a structural engineer to get a professional assessment on the issues in the space prior to any drywall removal. The Darbys hired decorated and well-established structural engineer Barry Cohen, who was in fact Duane's teacher, to come out and view the space. During the visit, Barry stated that the Darbys need to block off the seating area where the floors are softening, but recognizes the issues throughout the space. He also made it very clear that he would have to find a creative way to write the report. He stated that he would email the report to the Darbys in a week, but that week never came. When the Darbys would follow up, he would continue to delay. This happened for weeks as the Darbys were ignored by city codes and retaliated against by Borko Milosev of Post Road Management. Unfortunately, Barry would not provide the Darbys with a written report within the timelines set by his company Base Engineering. He did not invoice the Darbys for visiting the space two times. However, during a recent insurance investigation, Barry provided that creative report to the insurance provider, who in turn supplied to the Darbys. The Darbys also have an active state insurance investigation pending against these insurance companies. Stay tuned for more as we unveil the structural engineers, the city council members, attorneys, and state actors who helped aid this developer in his web of deceit. What a time, oh what a time, to be alive, back to the wall, let's do or die, baby you and I, Bonnie and Clyde, oh what a time, to be alive, oh what a time, to be alive, look at the look in our eyes, niggas was just a surprise, we lost it all, chopped at the knee, we was forced to crawl. Now we up for the brawl, D&D like I'm blocking the calls F and E's got us mad cause they stall What we see they ain't thinking we saw Damn, politics getting involved What they who when they holler is false We was on and we been seen the cross Look at wifey, she look like a boss She looking at Dottie, she know that I'm it Got a look in my eyes that she know I could get If the shit hit the fan, help me load up the blick Then we coming outside with that fire, fire, fire Slippery slope and a nigga gon' slide I ain't missing my shot, I ain't dealing with pride Me and my bitch and we ready to die We pushing some more for a piece of the pie Wanting it all